closer to you. Thank you so much for all that you do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, I thought we would start tonight kind of just with a little recap, but I love this little video. It was four of the actors who or four of the parents who were involved in the kids series. So I thought you might like to meet them, and they're all a great study of each of the characters. So let's watch this. Oh, we need sound. My name's April, and I'm Boo. Hi, I'm Clay. I'm very yellow and loving it, too, by the way. My name is Rachel, and I'm green. My kids would probably describe me as easygoing, calm, supportive. They would say that I like things done a certain way. They would say forceful, dominant, demanding, enthusiastic, very active, a lot of words. Some of my favorite things to do, honestly, is probably nothing. An ideal weekend for me would be to have an easy morning with not a lot of uh, things going on, just to enjoy a nice cup of coffee with my husband. One of my favorite things to do is to snow ski out of bounds. I also like to do CrossFit competitions. I live for good times. I love being around people. The bigger the crowd, the more fun I have. I have a sense of adventure, but I don't like going into something that's not prepared or planned. I enjoy being in the kitchen, baking. Love photography. I love hanging out with my friends. Most people don't know this about me. I like to quilt. Dip my toe in the macaroon world for a minute quickly got out. That was too much for me. One of my biggest pet peeves with children is when they don't follow direction. Picky kids, especially when it comes to eating. If they ask a ton of questions while I'm trying to give some sort of instruction or answer their first question. If I put a plate before you, I'm going to need you to eat what I gave you. They would say that they're usually scared of me. Uh, and I'm okay with that. My biggest problem is restraint. I have trouble not interrupting. Sometimes I just wanna be easygoing and let loose and not do anything. <laughs> I'm Clay and I am a yellow. My name's Brent and I'm red. My name's April and I'm blue. My name is Rachel and I'm definitely green. All right, well hopefully you were able to see yourself a little bit in those. Um, and. Really, just as a reminder, we're learning about the colors, not so much that you can walk away from this going, oh, I'm a yellow, or hey, they're a red. It's learning to understand people so that we can have better relationships with them, because that's what God calls us to. And so just from like the video there, you saw everybody was very different, um, just like everybody in this room is very different. And each of us come into this life and we look at this life through very different lenses. And hopefully you've all been able to maybe pick that up a little bit more in the class. I know some people said to me, I really had no idea there were people who were so different and their brain works different. And even just me talking to different people through this, I'm like, oh, I didn't realize that's the way you think. And now that's going to hopefully help me have a better relationship with them. And so we all come into this life thinking differently and we all come into this life with different needs. And so I just kind of want to start there again and just remind all of us that Jesus is where we go when a need is unmet. Whether you're a red, yellow, green, or blue temperament, you need to go to Jesus because he truly is the only one who can fill every one of your needs. People can and situations can definitely fill you up at times, but we should never look to anybody else but Jesus to be filling our needs. And then I wanted to share this scripture with you. I read last week in Matthew 6, 33. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need and that was just a real reminder to me and I hope to you that when we're following Jesus and we're putting him first and what he calls us to do first he meets every one of our needs and Jesus fills up the guest tank you know, if you're a yellow and you need some attention or you need to know that you are approved, Jesus can give that to you. If you are a red and you want to lead and be in control of things, he's the ultimate leader. If you're blue and you're looking for perfection and you're looking for things to go according to plan, he has the plan and it is going according to his plan. And if you're green and you need that peace because life around you is a little crazy, you can find it in him no matter what's going on around you. Um, but I hope from last week we're all able to see that 
each one of us brings different needs and that many times our behaviors are they come out of our need for something. And so we want to learn to react, not to what people are doing, but we want to respond to the why of what people are doing. So I wanted to share this story with um, one of the people who I did this small group with, really learned a lot about how to interact with her kids. Um, and she's a reg, and she has a yellow son and a blue daughter. And one of the things I kind of asked her, I said, what would you share from what you learned before? And she said, well, here's one that I learned. I will be sound asleep at 5 a.m. in the morning, and my son will come into the room. And he will start jumping on the bed. And he will start ask, mom, mom. And what I did for a long time was just go back to bed. Just go back to bed. Just go back to bed. And it became, he would leave. And then he would come back in with a trumpet or come back in with something else at 5 a.m. As a yellow, what do you think he wants? attention and he needs that connection. She's learned when he comes in at 5 a.m., come sit on the bed, she sits up, she talks with him, lets him talk, does a little bit of eye contact. Okay, mom. And he leaves and she goes back to bed. As opposed to 45 minutes of back and forth, louder attention, bringing the ball off the wall, all those kind of things, she responded to the what he, the why of what he was doing, not just what he was doing. Because for a long time she said, I would, he'd get in trouble before 6 a.m. because she was not understanding what was going on. And so hopefully you can, as you interact with people, you can learn to start responding to maybe why they're doing it instead of what they're doing. So tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about tips for all of the colors. And um, I was trying to think of every week, like what was a visual that might help you? So I had the idea of the crepe paper here. Now, I have to be very honest with you, as a red, I was incredibly frustrated today because my vision has not been accomplished. I wanted this big backdrop with all of the different colors on there, hanging. It took forever. Uh, our little one of our briefcase or one of our bookshelves fell apart. I got a little bit through, it fell down. I was incredibly frustrated. And I wish I could feel myself that red, like, ugh. So, okay, Lord. You got a different plan? What am I gonna do? So you get this nice little podium of crepe paper here. It was supposed to be a lot bigger for you to see, but hey, that's okay. But as I was thinking about it, each one of us, you know, we can live like this. Blue's in their lane, red's in their lane, yellow's in their lane, green's in their lane. And it looks very pretty, almost, but how, how many of you know that's not the way life is? You've got to interact with people. All of these colors have to intermesh. And so I thought there's probably two ways to do that. The first way is like this, where we clash. And this is not pretty in any way, shape, or form. If a blue and a red and a yellow and a green are all fighting to get prominence and not understanding each other, this is not how we want our relationships to look. However... If we try to understand each other and we work together, that looks a whole lot better when we're not trying to crash into one another, but we're learning to work together. And so no matter who you have to work with, sometimes there has to be give and take to get on the same page, and that looks a whole lot better than that. And so hopefully some of these tips are going to help you remember that. So there are two tips that I want to give to every color that I think if you're going to do a class on relationships are just kind of a no-brainer, but I want to reiterate them. The first one, and this is probably something maybe you never thought to do, but I think would really help, especially when you've come to realize I'm going into situations or things with people who are completely different than me. Talk about your expectations. What are you viewing from this time? Or we're going to go on a hike together today. How do you see this going? Um, simple things like you could ask your boss, how should I come into your office? 
Like, have you ever thought about that? You know, sometimes we just rush in and say things, or we might go in and want to spill 18,000 personal things, and your boss just wants three facts. It might be a great opportunity to say, hey, I did a relationship class, and was just curious, when I walk into your office, how should I come in? What would help our conversation be better? Um, if you're doing an event with someone, or how do you see this going? What's it like? Um, Easter's coming up. Husbands, wives, look at each other. How do you see Easter dinner going? We're going to have family over. What's important to you in this day? Because chances are, if you are in relationship with someone who's a different color than you, it's going to be entirely different. If you're a yellow and you're looking at Easter dinner, you probably could care less if ham is cooked perfectly and the pineapple is arranged just right. Whereas if you're a blue and you've cooked this dinner and you want everything to look right and people to sit there and be still, you're coming into this situation with two different expectations. It really helps if you talk about it. And if anything else, maybe just asking the people in your life, how do you see this going? Um, I had a great example of this. I went out um, with a yellow friend of mine, and she had called me, and she said, I need to pick up some stuff for my house. You know, I'm redoing some stuff in the bathroom. Would you go with me to Target? Okay. So for those of you who know or have learned a little bit about reds, anybody want to guess what my brain did when I heard we're going to Target and we have to pick up some things? Yell it out. Anybody have any guesses? There, oh, the, I, she even did it. What do we have to do? I even said, make sure you have a list. So when we go, we get there, we get it done, and we got to Target. I got out the list. We drip the cart there. Boom, boom. Okay, you, oh, you need a wash can? Or okay, there's, there's three choices. Which one do you like? Okay, boom, it's in the cart. Let's go to the next one. She was a yellow. What do you think she was thinking that afternoon was going to look like? I want to look at everything. What else for my yellow friends? Exactly. There were very, very dis different expectations for that hour together. She wanted to have fun with her friend. And if she picked up a couple things on her list, that would have been great. Not me, man. I was there. We were getting everything. And we're leaving out. And we talk later. And she goes, that just didn't go very well. And we've figured out it was very much because I'm task oriented, she's people oriented, and we were now we kind of understand and we did something else um, before Christmas and it was like, so how do you see this going? How do you see this going? We had a much better time because I knew it was about fun and I didn't care whether we got out of that escape room or not. We were there for fun. And just an FYI, our blue friend came with us, and she made sure not one of us tripped on any of the balls or any of the things that we were throwing around. So, so it's just a great opportunity for you to better your relationship before conflict. Ask the person, how do you see this? What are you looking for in this? Um, the other thing I think is just a life lesson that sometimes I think we need to get told again and again you are going to mess up, plain and simple. Reds, you're going to be demanding and say words you shouldn't. Yellows, you're going to forget details. Greens, you might not ex do exactly what somebody wanted you to do. Blues, you might be very critical with your words because things didn't go according to plan. Make sure you can say, and you say it a lot, I'm sorry, I messed up. Because that means more, I think, afterwards to that person. Because you are going to make mistakes. Make sure you take the time to tell them, I'm sorry. And I've talked to a couple of you, and a couple of people are kind of feeling a little sad because they look back and they think, oh, I wish I had known that. I had known about this 20 years ago. And there is no limit to I'm sorry. And you can very easily go back to anyone in your life and say, I've learned a lot about myself and realized that maybe some of my words came across in a way that I never meant them to. I'm really sorry. Um, 
and it, you can start fresh. And I think, for, especially for parents, there is nothing better than being able to admit to your children you've made a mistake and ask for forgiveness. You know, it could be simple of, like, I didn't realize my words sounded so mean, and they hurt you. Um, we needed to do that job, but my tone of voice should have been different. I forgot that detail, and I let you down, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry I missed the deadline. I'll work to remember it the next time. And so there is no way relationships are ever going to get better if we can't say, I'm sorry. Now, I understand um, reds. That's tougher for you probably. Just get used to doing it. It's better if you do it and you recognize you're not perfect because none of us are. Not a single one of us is. And I think what better witness to your children, what better witness to your unsaved coworkers? If you go back after a bad meeting and you say, you know what, I was not appropriate in that meeting, you know, it came across wrong or whatever, what kind of witness is that? Or you've apologized to your boss. I mean, that's pretty amazing and a great witness. So um, it's never too late to turn around and say you're sorry. Um, so then the rest of the class, what I want to do is I kind of want to go through in my head, I was trying to think, how should I do this? And I saw what I decided to do is we're going to take each color and we're going to talk to the blues, and I'm going to say to the blues, here are some things for all of you blues, and there was a lot of you here in the room, to remember as you're interacting with the other three colors. Then I want to talk to all of the other colors and say, hey, this is what you need to remember when you're interacting with the blue. And then I want to talk just a little bit about if you are parenting a blue child, because that's going to be very different than the other ones. All right? And... Um, I have to be honest, a lot of this, you know, I took from a lot of her videos and her books, but some of it is just life experience. And so these, you might, these, some of these are coming from Jenny's perspective. So, all right. So things for blues to remember. Raise, my, raise your hand again if you're a blue, which was a lot of, a lot of the class. So go blue. All right. So the first thing for a blue to remember, people do not see things like you do. And they may miss the depth of the meaning of your words. You may need to specify details or ask the person to tell you what they heard. Blues, we will not get if you say, I'll be there at 10, that that meant bring this, bring that, come here and meet you there. In your brain, you have such a depth to that, you conveyed that meeting and I'll see you there at 10. The rest of us don't think like that. So please, if you're a blue, clarify. Go back and say, okay, did I, can you repeat, can you tell me what you thought of that? Or, hey, did I, was I make myself clear? Where are we meeting? And you'll get to hear back what they're saying. So blues, remember, we do not catch all of the details in the depth of what you say. Um, Blues, remember that practice makes better or permanent. It doesn't make perfect. I wish all of you blues, I could give you the gift of life being perfect. It's never going to be perfect. But a plan and practice and working at it can make it better. Or as my husband said, his volleyball coach told him, it makes it permanent. And you can really practice and it becomes something you do permanently. But don't, as a blue, put the level as perfection. You are not going to reach it. And so remember that. But you can get better. Um, for the blues, in your concern for safety, don't miss out on fun and opportunities. Sometimes in your mind, you live by worst case scenarios. And if you do that, oh my goodness, you can do that. If we go up there, we're going to get hurt and we're not, we're not going. Take a step back. And now I am all for making sure things are safe, but don't let you or the people that you're with miss out on some fun and opportunities because safety and just trying to control everything, it's never going to work permanently or all the time. For blues, forgive others and don't hold grudges. People's actions may seem disrespectful, but that may just come from the way they're wired. Part of the blue temperament is they will get angry at 
they will hold grudges when something doesn't go right. Now, not, that's not everybody. And, and if you're a blue and you're like, that's not me at all. These are general things just to remember. And then one other thing to our blues, stop and think of a plan B when you start to feel anxious or overwhelmed. Sometimes having thought through, okay, if that doesn't work and there's a plan B, you can go into a situation a little calmer because if something doesn't go right, you've taken care of plan B. Miss Joanne, who works here, is a blue, and we would sit and talk about camps and, okay, what's our plan B if it rains? What's our plan B if the person doesn't come? What's our plan B? And I'll be very honest with you. There were many times for some of our camps we needed plan B, and it really helped to have it, and it brings anxiety down sometimes when you have that plan B thought out because then it's not in the moment, and you're so frustrated because the plan isn't working. All right? Now, for the rest of you, for the reds, the yellows, and the greens in the room, how do you interact with blue? Here's some tips to think about. And blues, you can amen or shout yahoo if you think I'm giving good advice. Give them space and time when they need it. They need it to think and decompress and do the deep thinking. And remember, just because they're quiet doesn't mean they're mad. Those of you who are yellows and blues are taking quiet time, that does not mean they're mad at you. They need that deep time. Um, Blues, you okay with that one? Good one to shake your head. Yep, okay. So they need some space and silence, and you may need to find ways to give that to them. Show them respect. A small thing can matter greatly, so think about them in what you say. I think blues really have so much that they've thought about and these deep thoughts and they've worked through so much. We need to think about them and show them respect. And so you need to make sure thinking about if I'm interacting with the blue, I need to ask them or I need to talk to them. I need to see what they're thinking because they might have totally solved a problem in their head. And if you don't even ask them, it can come across as very disrespectful, and we don't want to do that. Um, This is one I have trouble with, honey. You don't have to throw the red flag. Do not interrupt them when they're talking and remember the details. If you are red or yellow, you like to process. Blues hate to be interrupted because they have something they want to tell you. It needs to flow through, and if you interrupt them, they may have to start all over again, and it disrupts their thought. You have to bite your lip and listen. Um, The next one is, uh, for all of the rest of us who aren't blue, remember that they have very high standards of perfection for themselves and for everything around them. They may get very frustrated when things are not perfect. Give them grace when it happens. So we need to be very grace givers to all temperaments, but especially when they're frustrated when something's not going right. And then last but not least with blues, lower your voice and use precise words. How many blues needs a lot of fluffy words? How many of you blues lower your voice and say it boom, boom, boom? Would you agree to that? All right. I know for some of us that's hard. All right, and then last but not least, let's take a second and look if you have a blue child. Anybody here think they have a blue child? Blue temperament child, I should say. And this is just someone who's, you know, task-oriented, they're thinkers. Blues, especially blue kids, they do not, and these really actually apply to blues, even grown-up blues, but especially for kids. They do not like surprises and big changes to plans. Do not plan a blue surprise birthday party. Don't do it. They won't like it. Oh, and they walk home from school. Hey, we're going bowling. This will be great. Mm -mm, Not to a blue, it won't be. They need some time to process and plan. So don't think I'm just going to spring something on my blue. Maybe if you're a yellow, be very careful springing something on a blue child. That doesn't work well for them. Exactly. That's right. You already have plans. 
and that's like three-year-olds. Like they're already starting to figure out. And that's like a, a great thing for a blue is if they know when they come home from school, they're going to do this, this, and this. If you have to change it, take the time to say, we have to run to the doctors for this. But when we get home, you can have some quiet time. I've thought through you. Here's a snack. Help them show that you've put thought into that, and it'll make that transition a lot better for them. Uh, their feelings can be very deep. So don't push them to just get over it. If a blue is upset or they've had something happen, don't just, oh, quit crying, just get over it. That is not what a blue wants to hear. They have deep feelings. Let them feel it. And I think, honestly, that goes to blue adults as well. Um, they don't want to hear, relax, it'll be fine. They need to work it through in their head and problem solve it. For kids, um, recognize a blue kid's anger generally comes from frustration. It's not that they're so mad, it's they're so mad that this isn't working or this didn't go according to plan. And so recognize that, that their anger may be more frustration and so you can deal with it a little bit different. If you see, you know, your little boy's a blue and he's getting frustrated because he can't get the trains to go together. We had a little three-year-old blue who did not process magnets are opposing and he was getting furious and ended up slamming one of them down and throwing them. You would think it's, they're mad. They're just frustrated because these two ends should go together. And so recognize that they, you may have to deal more with frustration and help them work through that. Um, they can be very hard on themselves and can be emotional. Um, they're the ones who, they're gonna come home and they got a 99 out of 100 and they're upset because they studied and they really wanted the 100. Or they maybe they did something and they can be, um, especially for kids, that can come out as crying. And so that might be something just to say, I understand that you're frustrated. I know that you work so hard at this. And that's the thing as a parent or even interacting with people. So many times we have to learn to validate what they're feeling. Not excuse it, but validate it. Compliment maybe a skill that they have and then figure out a way to speak their language. So it may be that little boy in the three-year-old room, it would be, I can see that you're frustrated that these trains aren't going together. You're such a good problem solver. What's a way we could figure out that they work? Let's try. Maybe I can show you a way that they'll go together because I know you want to make these trains and go around the track, and you know you have only so much time to do it. So you don't just dismiss it. You find words to validate it, complement a strength, and then help them figure out what need is being met or not met. Um, blues kids especially can be very negative. They can be very critical, and they can complain. And a lot of that is because it's not going the way that they think it should. The other thing they can do is like, oh, well, of course they're going to be bad. And I'm going to fail my test. And that's just horrible. And I don't know if we're going to, you know, this and that and that. And so you need to make sure that you help them learn to phrase it differently. Instead of criticizing and saying how bad it is, say, how could we look at it differently? Or what's a plan if something does happen? Or instead of saying, this is stupid because I couldn't get an A, it could be, what could we do? Or not, not what could we do, what would happen if you get a B? Is it going to be okay? And you talk them through that. So just recognize that they may get, you might have a blue child who's very negative, very critical. But you do want to help them make plans for their words. Because you don't want just, oh, that's a blue kid. He's allowed to be as judgmental as he wants. That's not what we're trying to say. We're not saying just because your temperament leans one way, we don't find better ways to do it. But maybe it's saying, sit down with a blue kid and say, who's complaining a lot, what is a better plan for your words when you're frustrated? Why don't you think about some better word choices and come back and maybe we can talk about them so that the next time you get frustrated, instead of saying a bad word, you say, this is bothering me. But they're pretty, blues are amazingly intuitive and problem solving and precise. 
even little kids can figure out a plan for something, okay? So blues, anything else that you think people should know or this is your chance to tell other people and there's lots of people watching YouTube, so a way to, that you would want them to know about you. Anybody wanna share from a blue perspective? Go ahead. Oh, okay, I thought someone would All right, we'll move on to our greens. All right, so for those of you who are green, who's green in our room? All right, oh, that was so loud for a green. I love that, great. All right, so greens. Here are some things to remember. See deadlines in the context of people. Sometimes by making yourself do something, you are really, really blessing people who are different than you. And so it might be your boss is, I need this by Friday, and you're like, it shuts you down. Think of it, okay, my boss needs this because then our team is going to get this done. Maybe take a deadline, take a step back and say, what is this deadline accomplishing? And who is it helping? I had a friend who had to deal with somebody who was green, and they needed to have something done at a certain time. And they went to them and they said, we have to have it done by this day because these people are not going to be here. They're going on vacation. They want to do their best job. They want to make sure it's done. And we want to value their time so that they can go on vacation and we don't have to interrupt them on vacation. It worked a whole lot better because Greens were able to see the deadline was in, in regard to people, not just we need it by Friday. So remember that. Deadlines can involve people. For our greens, people may forget to ask your opinion. It's not that they don't want to hear it. They just may be wired differently. Please express your opinions and share your ideas. And I love this because I had, I sent out the email, of like, what would you want me to know? I had a green respond, and I was like, this is awesome, thank you. And they just shared that even though they're quiet, that doesn't mean they're unapproachable. And so just because you see somebody who's quiet and not saying much, doesn't mean they're rude, doesn't mean they don't wanna talk to anybody. You may just need to go up and say, hi, or if you know the person, what's going on? What do you think about this? That's a big one for, I, I'm just learning, what do you think about this? Can you share, tell me how you see this. That matters a lot to a green. Um, don't be, for all my greens, don't be afraid to do something and disappoint people. You may miss out on things. Trust your abilities and remember the times you have succeeded. I talked to someone who she told me, she's like, as a kid, I was scared to do anything because I didn't want to disappoint people. I was so scared I would mess up. I didn't want to disappoint anyone. And I thought, that's kind of sad that people will miss out on things because they're so worried they might disappoint someone or cause stress. Stress and disappointment aren't always going to be there. Please, as greens, share with us. Do things because there's so much that God has for you and so much that you have, that gentle, caring heart that we need that sometimes other temperaments don't ask for, but we need it. Um, and then for greens, there will, there will be stress and conflict in this life. I wish there wasn't, but there will be. Walking through it can lead people to getting along with good outcomes. You are wired to help people. What's amazing about the green temperament is they're wired to help people figure out how to get along. But what's interesting is they hate when people aren't getting along and they're stressed. And so there's a little bit of trying to overcome that. But recognize when you jump in, you have a lot of insight that sometimes the other temperaments really need. And then last but not least, don't let resentment build inside. I've talked to a lot of greens who have said it just stays in and stays in and stays in and then it either explodes or they don't want to do with anybody and they run away. 
and neither one of those things help the situation. So greens, if something is bothering you, take that step and say it because it will help and the person might not have any idea that what they're doing is bothering you and you might take it, take it, take it and then they blow up and we don't want that to happen. So please, don't hold it inside. Find a way to express what you're feeling. For the rest of us, how are we supposed to do, interact with greens? What are some things that we can do to better our relationships with those who have a green temperament? Remember to be personal. Remember that they want to know that you're interested in them before you ask or demand something from them. Parents especially, if you have green kids, and we'll get to that, if you're always, do this, do that, do this, do that, they want to know that you care about them. They want to know that you're interested in them, not just telling them what to do. Um, give them time to make decisions and recognize they might need time to process. My green who responded all also said, don't put us on the spot. It's very tough. And so that would be like a parent maybe saying to their child, we're going to your grandmother's. They're going to ask you how you are. What's something you might want to say to them? Because unfortunately, I think sometimes what happens is you go someplace with a green child and someone says, what do you think? What do you think? And they're just like, and it can come across if you don't understand them as rude. And why aren't you saying anything? Tell, say something to your grandmother. They may need a time to think about that. And so you may even as a green, you know, if you have to ask something from someone you know is a green, let them know ahead of time, or I'll think about it, or why don't you think about this, and we'll talk about it later. So give them time to process. They do not like to be put on the spot. All right. Was that? Uh, all right. Greens can be very involved and into one thing. Remember that and ask them about it. A lot of the people that I know in my life who are greens really figure one thing that really excites them, whether it's, I know one who just loves trains, and so they found everything out about trains. I know another one who wanted to make bread and figured every video and why everything worked and one machine and this machine and that machine and this, and if you do it this way and you try new and bought all this stuff, remember that because that's really important to them ask them about it. I could see a couple greens are like a little bit smiling, like, yeah, you probably have that one thing that you just love figuring out and getting involved in. And then once again, like we said to the greens, if you need something from a green, frame it in the context of people and how it affects people is better than just a deadline. So the team is working on this, and when you have made your decision, then it's going to go to this person, and they'll do it. So we're all going to look and work on this together. Put it in that context. And then last but not least, with greens, do more in person. They do not like an email that says, hey, do this, or a phone call, I need this, goodbye. Talk to them. Get involved as much as you can face-to-face. Okay. Greens, anybody disagree or want to add anything? All right. And then just a couple of things about green kids. And I think this was, this was an interesting, I learned some things as I was re reading this that, um, and studying it that I didn't really realize, and it really was kind of eye-opening. Um, they want to be on good terms with everyone, so watch your words. You do not want to use the words, I'm disappointed in you, to a green that would be crushing. And once they hear that, chances are they're not going to do a lot again because they're so worried they're going to disappoint you. So you have to be very careful with your words for greens. Remember that demanding things will not motivate them. I need it now. It has to be done now. Go clean your room now. It stresses them out and it shuts them down. And so you kind of just remember your words can be either bringing them to life or shutting them down. Um, greens, their sense of time is different than others. And I thought this, that was a great way of saying it. And we've talked a little bit, I talked to you about my friend who, the, my green, her green daughter needs two hours in the morning, whereas maybe the red son needs 10 minutes. 
giving that green child that time and recognizing it, their sense of timing is just different. It's not better, it's not worse, it's just different. And just because someone is slow doesn't mean they're lazy. And I thought that was a great quote. Was the turtle lazy or was he slow? And for a lot of people, slow is very frustrating. We have to learn if we're not green that we need to give them the time that they need. Um, their, your expectations as parents, if you have a green child, your expectation, your hopes, and your dreams may not match their interest. And I thought that was interesting. How many times have you heard a parent say, they're just not living up to their potential? Anybody ever heard a parent say that? Very interesting because the, great, uh, the example that really clicked for me was you have a dad who's like, I want you to join the basketball team and practice and get better and win the games and your season is going to be good because you've won games and you've gotten better. But the green child, they might say, I got some really great friends on my team and we have really become close. Two very different expectations. Is one right and one wrong? No, they're just different. And so you may have to adjust your expectations, what you think they should be doing to where they are. And that kind of goes back to that first tip. Okay, if you're going to join the basketball team, what's a win? What do you want to see at the end of the season? And you might hear, I want to be a better teammate. And so you need to then say, okay, that's a goal I can work with, not I need to make them not miss any foul shots. And I think that's a really important thing to remember as a parent of a green child. Their expectations of life and what they get out of it can be very different than you. Um, and then let them see how their part matters to everyone and discuss how best to get it done. One of the, um, the red dad up there in one of the videos, he told the story of he was going to their cabin and it was, or their vacation home. And so it was their family, their cousin's family, both sets of grandparents. But the vacation home, they, when they first get there, they have to clean it all up because it's sat and empty for a little while. So they have to clean the, you know, rake the leaves, bring the, um, leave, the sticks away, open things up, hose down everything so that they all can enjoy it. And enjoy it. The red dad is like, we're going to get there, do this, 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 you do this, you do that, you do that. And he got really mad because his green son was assigned to rake or pick up the sticks. And he's where's my green son? He's looking around. Grandma's ready to push the lawnmower. Find my green son is out by the beach because the sunlight was the perfect time for photography. And you're just like, as a, you know, you can all, I think all of us have had that kind of feeling when someone's not doing what you think they're supposed to do. But he didn't know. I got out of the car. Oh, perfect sunlight, grabs the cousin, goes, let's take some pictures with my new camera that I'm studying and I'm going to get into and I have new film, had no idea that his picking up sticks was a part and then grandma couldn't push the lawnmower and these things couldn't get done. And he, he said, I had to learn how to help them see what their role was in the context of everyone. And I thought that was really important to say, and to say ahead of time, we're going to get there. How do you see that going? We all have to clean the house up. So I'm going to ask you to do the sticks, and then grandma can come in after you. So if you can get the sticks done, grandma gets her job done, and then we can get to the place where we need to. As well as the green saying, dad, this is the special hour. Could I have 10 minutes to go take pictures? Dads might have to say, sure, and let them because that's something they're really interested in. All right. Yellows. Ready for the yellows? 
All right, there's my one yellow. All right, so some things for yellows to remember. How many of you are yellows? Okay, not as many. All right, so for yellows, louder and more words may not draw others to you. You are great at telling stories and using fun words. We might miss some of what you say if they're too loud. So just remember, sometimes the excitement gets going, sometimes other temperaments will tune that out and they'll miss what you're saying. So instead of getting louder, just use your words. You're very gifted at telling stories. Louder doesn't always draw people in. For my yellows, people do not determine your worth. People may not understand your innate needs and may not see the amazing person that you are. And so I think a lot of yellows sometimes feel that way, especially when we watch that video of that little girl, the one yellow, she's like, everyone tells me I'm obnoxious and everyone tells me this and I can't even stand myself sometimes. Don't do that to yourself as a yellow, please. Um, yellows, there are people who need silence and space. Try to look and see where and who those people are and give it to them. Um, back in the kids wing, we have kids come in and some kids are ready for the, hey, how are you, and the big high five. And some kids are very scared. They don't need, hey, how are you? They need, and that's learning the difference. Um, Sometimes, for all my yellows, sometimes you have to do things that are boring and mundane. But remember, if you get them done, they can lead to more fun. You know, I was just trying to think of a, like a kid who doesn't want to learn his math facts. Hey, if you learn your math facts, that means we have money to go spend on this, this, and this. Or we can use it to go bowling with your friends. Sometimes mundane and boring things lead to the fun and the people that you're looking for. And then last two are yellows. Think about volunteering or committing to something. In the moment, it might make you and the other person happy. But if it doesn't get done and you can't follow through, it can be worse at the end and not so much fun. And so just try to remember, before I say yes, 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 and then I ended up disappointing them, take a second and say, if I say yes, they're happy now, but they might be unhappy later, can I actually do that? So just be careful with that. For all of, our, for all of us who aren't yellows, what are some things for us to think about? Listen to yellows by giving them eye contact and attention. They need when they want, and then the second one is when you see a yellow, please acknowledge them in a way that they know that you care. When they come in a room, stop, look at them, say hello. Would all of my yellows agree with that? When you walk in and people don't, you just walk in and you're like, and nobody says anything, the insecurity goes crazy acknowledge them, say hello to them. Even for all you task people, stop what you're doing, say hello to them. Um, for all the rest of us who aren't yellow, remember that a yellow's love of fun, or I'm sorry, remember that yellows love fun, so menial and boring things are hard for them. Sometimes they want to learn and do what you want them to do, but their bodies and their brains have a hard time when it isn't fun. I don't think most yellows don't want to do certain things, but sometimes there's just so much going on inside, it's hard to control. And so just remember that. And then last, um, second to last, remember a yellow can be insecure, so hearing words of encouragement often helps. So make sure you're using those words of encouragement. And then last for our yellows is spend time with them. They love being together. Their behaviors may mean they are missing that interaction and attention that they need. Sometimes when you see a yellow whose behavior is a little out there or a little like, what are they doing? It may be that need for attention. It may be that need for someone talking to them 
or that approval. So remember, see the behavior. Don't just react to the behavior. Respond to why they might be behaving that way. Okay, anybody here have yellow kids? Oh, lots of yellow kids. All right, so here's a couple things just to maybe help you with your yellow kids. And I do, I forgot to say this before, um, Kathleen's book, The Grown-Up Guide to Kids Wiring, I mean, there are complete sections on just dealing with your yellow child. And then there's one for your red, and it talks about words that build them up, words that don't. And if you have kids who are different temperaments than you, I highly, highly recommend this book. And honestly, if you want the book and you can't afford it, come see me, and I will be happy to give you one. If it's going to help you and your kids get along better, that's what we want. I can't in an hour and 15 minutes go through every one of the things, and Kathleen spent a really lot of time doing it, so... If you do want one and you can't afford one, I am happy, the church is happy to give you one to better the relationships in your family. Um, yellow kids, they never have enough fun and they can be bored. Probably yellow kids have said, I'm bored. I want something to do. So remember their life, they want a collection of experiences and fun. I have a friend who said um, after they left Disney World for the day, they were driving away. Okay, what's next? And you're like, what? <laughs> like we just spent all day in Disney World. But for a yellow, okay, what's next? There's three more hours in the day. Let's fill it with something else that's fun. And so you do have to remember that they might want another experience. Or a lot of times, I'm bored. I'm bored. And they're looking at you to fill that time. You look at them and you're like, you are so creative. I bet there's something really cool that you could think of to do right now that would fill this time. And maybe, oh, could you think of something that you could build for your mom or do something for dad? Frame it in the context of people, but use their creativity. You don't have to fill it in. Okay, honey, you're bored. Let's stop. Think for a second. What could we do? Run around the house and come back and tell me something you might think of. Um, yellow kids, and you're raising a yellow kid, they can be very impulsive and not consider consequences. So I'm going up the slide, and oh, there's a pile of leaves. Why don't I jump off the slide into that pile of leaves? Because that could be really fun. So you are, as a parent, going to have to teach your yellow how to think through a, bit, a little bit. And you might have to say, okay, we're going to the playground. If you would jump off a tall one of the things there, you know what could happen? You might break your leg and then you wouldn't get to play with your friends. So as you're playing, maybe not jump off of anything high. But, and they will, if it's fun, let's do it. And so as a parent, you are going to have to teach them how to, how to learn a little bit. But it's not going to be, as a blue parent, well, there's all kinds of dangers on this slide. And I don't want you to go there. You might hurt yourself. Only stay on this swing. Stay in this thing. How many of my yellow kids are going to go, okay, you're going to go play. You're going to have fun. Make good choices because we don't want your legs to get hurt. High things if you fall. But a lot of that is done ahead of time. Don't wait with the yellow till they're at the door ready to jump out of the car to go play. Talk about it ahead of time. Help them learn some consequences. Um, yellow kids will have lots and lots of energy. You have to help them find a way to use it. They're just going to have energy. How many of you yellow adults have energy? You just have it. You have to teach your kids how to use it. Um, and so it might be, all right, every day we're going to run around the house for 10, 10 minutes. We're going to run outside, go and have races. You have to teach them, you have all this, what do we do? Uh, one of my nieces has a yellow son, and they started, he's having a hard time sitting still in class, so daddy gets up with him, and they work out before school. So they're doing 
all kinds of stuff to get some of his energy out. She talked to the teacher, please, at recess, let him run. Let him run. Find ways to get that energy out. And teach them places to do it. Because there are, you don't want your kid running around your dining room with grandma's good china that's in the china cabinet. But they need to run. Let them have a basement where they can run as much as they want. Um, help them find ways to stay on track and handle details. If you make something fun, chances are they might be able to do it. So I was trying to think of like when we would walk into the door, I was one of five and there were all this, one of the things that drove my red mom nuts was all these shoes. Because you walk in, you throw your shoes down. So what do you do with a yellow kid? You find a container with a basketball hoop. Okay, when you walk in, shoot your shoes into the container. Guess what? The shoes might get into the container because it's a fun thing to do, not, oh, please, put your shoes, go take them in the room, make sure they're on this nice little thing. You have to help them um, with some of those things. And then the other thing for a yellow child that you really do have to think about is everyone is a friend. So you do need to help them interact with people safely. You know, they're going to want to go up to everyone in a store and talk to them. And it might be, you can say hi to people when mommy is with you. You know, we can, you, you can wave at everybody, but we don't walk with everybody. Because mommy will be very sad if you walk with somebody else and I don't know where you are because I love seeing your face. Not... There's all kinds of bad people out there, and you have no idea what they're going to do. It's not going to communicate that to a yellow, so help them. All right, reds. What are some things if you're around? How many reds do we have here? All right, what are some things for us reds to remember? You can achieve what you want and be in control, but if it leaves a trail of hurt people, what did you achieve? Winning is temporary. Recognizing that loving and respecting people is what good leaders do. Take the time to listen and make requests, not demands. And I just, I think it's so important. Red, sometimes you can be, go ahead and get it and we don't care about people. And not that you don't care about, you just don't realize it. A trail of hurt people behind you does not make you a better leader. Um, when they interview companies that are incredibly successful, almost always it has to do with the CEO. And CEOs who are driven and going ahead, but couple that with taking care of their people, have amazing companies. CEOs that don't care about their people, drive, drive ahead, they achieve, and then eventually the the company falls apart because there's nobody behind to support them. So be careful as a leader, you're not leaving a trail of people behind you. Reds, your way is not always the best way. And I know you might disagree with me on that, but it's not. It could be a great way, but in the situation you're in, there might be a better way. And so you do sometimes have to let go of I know exactly what to do, and this is the right way, and that's just the way it is. Um, reds, when you start blaming others, this is a signal to stop and think about what feels out of control. Own your mistakes and apologize out loud. If you find yourself blaming other people, it's, well, if you had done this and you had done that, stop. What's wrong? You feel probably out of control, and so you're blaming it on somebody else. Do you have to take ownership for something? And then it'll go a little bit smoother, and I know that's hard. Don't make work your idol. Take a vacation, step away from your tasks, and have fun. Enough said. And then not everything has to be done right now. Red, sometimes you see something, you want to get it done, let's go right now. Take a pause. I will, my husband and I were home and he said, you know, we should clean the screens because we're, you know, two seconds later, what do you think I was doing? 
I was cleaning the screens when we were already supposed to be doing something else. Take a pause, Red, and think, does it have to get done right now? So how do you who are not red interact with people who are red? Don't point out a red's mistake in a harsh way. They have such a hard time hearing when they've messed up. Find a better way to phrase it. Looking at a red and going, you're wrong. You are going to rear them up. And so it's, I don't think that was the best choice. Maybe let's think through what could have been a different choice. They're going to bristle at you were wrong. Phrasing it makes a big difference. Remember, asking for help from a, for a red to ask for help, it isn't easy. Sometimes you just have to offer, think of one thing to do and help them. Um, if a red asks you to do something, please know they need you to do it. And unfortunately, what happens with a lot of reds is they, if they ask you to do something and you don't do it, they'll never ask you again. And they'll take it and they'll do it. Parents who are red, be very careful of that because then your kids stop helping. Forgive a red when they say something in a harsh way. To them, it's just direct. It's not harsh. Reds, we need to try to use our words and use different words. The rest of the temperaments, please give us grace in some of our words. And then um, things to do when you are interacting with a red. Stick to your boundaries and advocate your decision. If a red understands you are serious and you have a reason for what you're saying, they're going to understand, or they should understand. Um, so don't forget about that. Red kids. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. Kathleen Edelman says, well, if you have a red kid, just get that ready for a battle every day. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you need to be ready. But one of my things, if you're raising a red kid, you have to be the leader. If a red kid sees that somebody isn't in charge, they're going to take charge. And I don't care if they're two, if they're 12, or they're 18. But if you're the parent, be the leader. Don't advocate for them. Don't dismiss, you know, your authority. Now, you can work with them, and you can give them responsibility, and you can do that. But don't let them run the house, especially as kids. Red kids have to learn how to work with other people and submit to other people. Reds, when they hear no or you need to, they will bristle, debate, ask why not, do it anyway, or lose their temper. Anybody amen that who has a red child? All right, there you go. So what, how do you do? And so they're debating and they're, they're arguing with you. A great way to deal with a red is, I see your viewpoint acknowledge that they have an opinion and they have a thought process. They want to know that you saw that. And then think about what's the outcome. If I want them to clean their room, and in my mind it's this way, what's the goal? Do I need to micromanage them and make them do it my way? Or do I say, I need your room clean. I'm going to trust you to clean your room. And I, do, would, I would like all your laundry or this. And then let them go with it. You don't have to micromanage a red. Because what you're going to do is you're, they're going to rebel against you. Um, so, and then even just asking them. You're a smart thinker. You're a leader. What, let's talk about how you're going to get this done. And you may have to say, okay, if they're going to do it that way, might not be the way I would do it, but in the end result, it gets what you want done. It's okay. Um, then when they demand something, and they will, they won't ask, they'll demand, ask them why. Reds are out loud processors, and so a lot of times, I, well, I have to do it, and I want to do this. Could you tell me why? And then they're going to tell you why. And this is the... And I know sometimes as parents are like, I just want them to listen to me. 
they're built to lead. So you may have to say, why do you want to do it that way? Or what do you think? And then listen to them. Give them a chance to talk. They're going to tell you what they're thinking. They're going to process out loud. And eventually you might hear, oh, this is linked to control. Oh, this is linked to loyalty. Oh, this is linked to credit for work. You're not, it's not necessarily a, a debate. Just say, can you tell me why you're thinking that way? Can you tell me why you want to do it that way? And then um, they will want to be independent. And you may have to teach your red. They're going to be ready at four years old. I'm going to use the microwave. I'm going to be able to get my own cookie. I'm going to put my own bath on. I can do it. You, they can be independent, but you may have to give them some guidelines. You can do those things when I'm in the room. And then, honestly, there, is a, there are things that you can give a red child to do at a much younger age than maybe a different temperament child, and that's okay. And that's the one thing. Parents, you do not have to treat your children the same. You know, I don't treat a blender and a TV the same, do I? I don't. How I take care of my blender, how I take care of my TV is different. You can tell your kids, I'm going to parent you differently because you're not the same child. And so you might have to say, yeah, no, you didn't get to do that till you're 10. He's doing it at eight because he has different wiring. And so at the end of all of those, one of the things I think um, hearing all of these things and just thinking about them, differences, all of these differences, Kathleen Edelman says, are problems, are not problems to be fixed. Don't look at your whatever color child or look at your friend who's this and think, how do I fix them? They're not to be fixed. They're, they have gifts that you can use and they can be leveraged. And I think that's so important. And I pray you've been able to maybe hear some things and learn to appreciate the way some people are different. And then finally, I just want to end with just one more push to think about your words because all of this really does stem from your words. It does interactions, but words are so important. Um, and I love the scripture in Proverbs 18, 21a. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And the words you use with different temperaments matter. Watch this. Take one. How are you? Good, I'm so glad to see you. At your house, what do you hear your mom and dad saying most often? Get off the couch. <laughs> Come over and do the dishwasher. <laughs> oh, go clean your room. Oh, hurry up, hurry up. And you need to do your laundry. I'm not warning you again. Be quiet. Why? Because we're really loud. Who took this? Who ate that? Why'd you do this? Why'd you do that? You're being distracted. Yeah, like I need you to put it down. Clean your room, do your chores. My dad says no. It's like right. all I hear. Okay, and, and which mom? My mom says like, hurry up. What have you done productive today? To unload the dishwasher, to clean the table, to wash the dishes. Remember to bring your lacrosse stuff to lacrosse practice. Clean up your desk. How did you not find that? I was right there. <laughs> What's the nicest thing somebody's ever said to you? I'm funny, and my teacher says I have a good imagination. Someone said I like a really nice personality, mm -hmm. and that I can be really respectful. Your smile's contagious. One of my friends said, like, you're the best person in the world. Really? How did that make you feel? Like somebody really cared about me. Yeah. My coach, I, I love him because yeah. even if we don't win or don't have a good mm -hmm. game, he'll be like, you guys did good. Mm -hmm. And he'll tell us what we did best and what we need to work on. I like hearing good things about myself from someone else. Yeah. Has anybody ever said anything that hurt your feelings? Um, you're so obnoxious. Really? All the time. I hear that maybe once a day. Those little comments stick with me all the time. Someone at my school said I wasn't good at like a certain sport we were doing for PE. It made me feel kind of sad and that I should stop trying it. This kid said I was a waste of life. Oh, really? It's just no one's a waste of life in my opinion. That's right. What's the very favorite thing your mom and dad have said to you? That they're proud of me. Yeah. 
They say you're gonna do great things one day. I love when my uh, mom and dad like say I'm awesome and cool and like they love me. I like to hear like good job, well mm -hmm. done, congratulations, stuff like that. Yeah. I think it's I love you. Really? I really like that. My mom says I'm special sometimes. Yeah. And my dad says I'm a really hard worker. Well, that must make you feel very valuable. It does. Mm -hmm. She says like I'm beautiful, smart, pretty and stuff. Yeah. Makes me feel nice and makes me feel more confident and positive. My mom always tells me that like I'm the most determined. So that's always stuck with me. Like if I have a project, I just remember like I'm the most determined one. <laughs> if I actually want to get this done, I can do it. My dad tells me very frequently, and my mom, my mom tells me this a lot too. I'm glad you are my son. Mm -hmm. I just love that. Sometimes I think kids say it in such a pure form, but words matter. And for all parents out there, they always remember all the do this, do that, do that. Make sure you couple it with the other things. In Genesis 1, verse 3, and I did have a typo here. It says 1.13. It's in one th Genesis 1, 3. This is what happens. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Literally in God's words, there was life. He spoke into the darkness, and there was light. There's life in our words, but I also love it. He saw it, and he named it. So there is power in your words for life and to give identity and to call things. He called it light. You can speak into the people around you life. You can call out all of the good things that God has poured into them. But in your tongue, there is the power of death, just like there is the power of life. In Genesis 3, 1, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God really say, You must not eat from any tree in the garden? His words, they were not true, but his words brought death. And I think it's just so important for every one of us to realize our words have life and death in them. And then I just wanted, I wrote this down, and I wasn't quite sure how to phrase it, but just as I was praying for a class, if words that have brought death have been spoken over you, and you may have heard some of those things, or some of those words have been spoken over to you that brought a sense of death or brought that despair to you, Take them to the one who died to give you life. Let him speak his words of love, life, and care over you. People, unfortunately, are going to use their words in the wrong way. And they are words of death. You have a savior who died on the cross and conquered death. Take those times to him. And maybe there are words in your head that people have spoken over you or you've heard because of the way you were wired when someone didn't understand you. Take that to Jesus. Let him heal you. Talk to him about that because he speaks and he brings life. And then I'm not going to get to it just because um, timing wise, but and I, the leader of children's ministry, we're not going over. So you are on time for your kids. On the last page um, of your outline, there's three bo four boxes, one of each color. Jesus spoke words. I think that can mean something to every one of our temperaments. Maybe look at the one that applies to you and let Jesus' words speak life over you. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for a chance to spend a few weeks talking about temperaments. Thank you for the men and women that are here, Lord, that they came because they want to better their relationships. They want to keep growing and learning. And Lord, it doesn't matter whether you're red, yellow, green, or blue, or we even call you that. We're all children of God. And Lord, I pray that you would help every one of us to use our tongues, to use our actions, to bring life 
to other people. Lord, thank you for the way you've made us. Help us to use all the things that you put into, into us for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, guys. And if you do have questions or you ever have questions about something you think about, um, most of you have my email from the class or you can always find me in the kids' wing.